Hey, thanks again for joining us here in the AppSec Village. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, depending on where you're at in the world. It's kind of a little hard to tell right now since we're not all in one big room together, but I've got another exciting talk for you. The next talk in our uh, agenda is going to be API and Security Top 10, a guided tour to the wild, wild world. We've got two speakers this time. We've got David Sopas and Paulo Silva. David leads a team of security researchers at Checkmarks and is a co-founder of Char49. With more than 15 years of experience in pen testing and vulnerability research, he has been acknowledged by companies like Google, Yahoo, eBay, and Microsoft. After retiring from his bug bounty hunting career, David now focuses on the Internet of Things security and tries to learn new things each and every day. Paulo, since his first OWASP local event back in 2010, has been active in the community, contributing to several OWASP projects. With over 15 years of professional experience as a software developer, he is now focused on ethical hacking and security research with regular collaborations with companies like Char49 and Checkmarks. He's interested in programming languages, DevSecOps, and web mobile secure coding practices. Please welcome David and Paolo. Hello everyone and welcome to the API and Security Top 10, the guided tour to the wild, wild world. Before we start, uh, I would like to thank uh, and appreciate the opportunity to be at DEF CON, uh, even if it's in safe mode, uh, and uh, AppSec Village for approving uh, our research. So, thank you. Let's start. Well, I will start by presenting uh, who we are, okay? Uh, we, with a brief description uh, of what APIs are, uh, the importance in today's software, the differences from traditional apps. Then we went through the OWASP API Security Top 10, talk a, a little bit about the project and our contribution to that project, and then guns blazing on the API's wild, wild world, where we show real vulnerabilities on modern web applications and describe a little bit about our findings. Who we are? Well, my name is David Sopas. Uh, I work for Checkmarks since February 16. Uh, I'm currently the security team leader of a, a very talented group of researchers. Um, I'm chief operating officer of uh, and co-founder of SHAR49. I was a bug bounty hunter a few time ago. Um, I have a, around 15 years in penetration testing and security research. Uh, nowadays, I'm playing more with breaking IoT devices, uh, specifically uh, using BLE technology uh, and focusing on modern web applications, of course, and API. Uh, some of my work you can already see on TechCrunch, The Register, Security Week, and ThreatPost. Um, sorry about the photo, but I used the pandemic filter. Um, I was in during it was during the quarantine uh, in Portugal, so that's it. I think it was very appropriate to this event. Moving on to Paulo. Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Paul Silva and it's a great pleasure to be presenting at DEF CON, especially together with my friend David. I used to define myself as a freedom enthusiast since I love everything related to free and open source software, World Wide Web or uh, cross country and bike packing. I have more than 15 years as a software developer, what is plenty of time to have done all sorts of mistakes. Uh, Right now I do ethical hacking and security research and since 2010 I'm a regular OWASP volunteer. Um, I'm uh, Currently I'm the OWASP Go Secure Coding Practices project co-leader and main collaborator on OWASP API security project. Meanwhile I'm used to fill the gap and deliver security awareness sessions in academia. Before continuing, uh, the mandatory disclaimer, uh, hacking systems without permission is crime and we are not responsible for misuse of any information we are about to disclose. Let's talk a bit about APIs. I like to look for definitions in the dictionary because words matter. 
nevertheless, I'm not expecting to find a uh, definition for API in the dictionary. Uh, but uh, something interesting about interface, uh, defined as a common boundary of two bodies. In fact, we can think about APIs this way, a common language that connected things talk in order to get work done. APIs have a central role in today's software. Uh, they are the common ground among several types of devices and applications. A generic language that all of them know how to talk, to, e to exchange data and execute functions. Uh, this is uh, different from traditional web applications in many ways. Before we had web servers playing this central role, doing the heavy work, uh, answering client requests, uh, gathering data from databases and other web services, gluing everything together, computing the final HTML and returning it back to the client to be rendered. Nowadays, there are several types of clients behind web browsers. We have smart bulbs, wearables, cars, surveillance cameras, etc, etc, etc. Uh, all these clients use APIs to make their capabilities available to other clients and to communicate uh, with each other. Clients are now more powerful than they were before. Uh, in modern web applications, there's a clear separation between front-end and back-end. The front-end nowadays is a bunch of JavaScript and CSS providing rich user interfaces to collect data, uh, send the data to several APIs, uh, making it generally available to all clients regardless their type. I think this is uh, pretty much about APIs and we should move on to the OWASP API Top 10 with David. So, OWASP API Security Top 10. You may already heard about OWASP. Uh, in its own words, it's a non-profit foundation uh, that works to improve the security of software. WASP Top 10 is one of the flagship projects and most of you should already know it already. Uh, it has played uh, an enormous role to bring security awareness into organizations, both to management and dev teams, but we have seen very specific API-related issues popping up. We should learn from past mistakes, and Erez Yalon and Inon Skedi decided to start the OWASP API security project to address API-specific issues. The document follows the same approach and the popular OWASP Top 10 for readability purposes, but it's 100% API-oriented. Our contribute. Uh, vendors had been doing business as usual and there's no API specific data uh, for a public call for data like other uh, OWASP projects. So we had to research. Um, there are several bug bounty programs that released full disclosure write-ups and we went there and even on some public information that we got hands on uh, but we had to review it and pick only the API related issues. So while reviewing the reports and the write-ups, we start standardizing the categorization and grouping things together. Uh, after a, a few months, we were able to compute a statistical top 10. Security risk, of course, was, was using the OWASP um, uh, risk rating methodology. Uh, we drafted uh, the first OWASP API security top 10 and asked several entities, organizations and individuals with relevant AppSec experience in the API field at least to get us some feedback. Uh, the draft was published on GitHub uh, and during the several months we worked with AppSec uh, community to, to get some feedback uh, and change a little things. Uh, by the end of 20 uh, 2019 uh, the final version was published and we're very happy with it then we went wild to validate how accurate the wasp api security tem top 10 2019 was so hope you can uh, have the opportunity to download it and see it apis in the wild wild world our research so um our focus was only on high-profile web applications uh, and uh, of course focusing on the API. We want to map all the vulnerabilities that we found 
uh, on the WASP uh, top 10 nine, 2019. So uh, you may ask uh, what was our biggest uh, problem, if I can say that. Uh, and yeah, it's, it was the responsible disclosure because many companies didn't reply or just didn't care about security. So uh, that was the most uh, challenging uh, issue that we encounter. On our research, uh, we tested eight APIs. Uh, we discovered uh, 28 API issues that we categorized on the, on the, your, as you can see on the right table. Uh, we got a minimum CVSS 2.7 and a 7.7 .7 max. Um, we found seven broken user authentication. We uh, five with five issues. We have uh, broken object level authorization or BOLA, or ex and also with five uh, excessive data exposure. Um, security misconfiguration was four. Uh, broken function level authorization three, and also with three lack of resources and rate limiting three. Uh, finishing with one result on injection, not so common anymore. Findings, moving on to Paulo. Okay, let's start with the broken object level authorization. You may know this by IDOR or Insecure Direct Object Reference, but while writing OWASP API Security Top 10, we decided to rename it since IDOR is not a very accurate name. In this case, we found two uh, exposed APIs, a GraphQL and a REST one, uh, both vulnerable to broken object level authorization. As you may know, GraphQL is not like uh, REST, and you should ask for what you need and you will get exactly that. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, this is valid uh, for resources like profile, but also to their fields. Of course, we can try to guess everything or use word lists, but it becomes even more interesting if you find another vulnerability, uh, like a security misconfiguration, allowing you to query that information. Uh, more details about the security misconfiguration specific to GraphQL uh, in uh, its specific section. You just have to wait a few more issues and we will get there. Uh, by now, let's focus on the requests on the left side. Uh, we are looking for a specific profile based on its, prof uh, on its slug. The slug is public information since it's part of the user's public uh, URL. On the right side, we have the API response. We can see user's public URL, uh, the slug, and also uh, something that points uh, the profile to be private. But nowadays, we never know what private means. Uh, we have several other properties, but there's another one, the ID, uh, which we will use with the REST API. So we took the ID property we got from the GraphQL API and we used it to uh, request a user on the REST uh, API. Uh, we got additional information, including billing uh, information with full address and tax ID number. Uh, at least this time API doesn't say that the, the user uh, resource is private. Uh, but note that both uh, requests uh, were anonymous. There was no authentication nor authorization. Uh, I think this was a good warm up. Uh, we can continue with David. Broken user authentication, in this case, SoundCloud. Our final objective was to get account takeover, and we did it. So, on SoundCloud, which is already disclosed, this issue. Um, I can give you a, a brief description what we, we, we did. So on user, ac user account lockout um, based on failed login attempts is something that we don't see often. Um, in this case, the API was, uh, API was uh, rate limited. So nevertheless, it was possible to bypass and we will show you how. 
Um, so chaining the, the rate limited bypass with the user enumeration issue that we found, we were able to accomplish the account takeover via credential stuffing attack. Um, this is a typical user enumeration scenario where we abuse the recover uh, password mechanism. We have a binary feedback depending either the provided email belongs to a user account or not, as you can see on the burp screenshot. Rate limiting bypass uh, was something fun because at least was the first time we saw it. Uh, it was based on the user agent, uh, the device ID and the signature. So both device ID and signature was computed client side. Instead of reversing the JavaScript uh, logic, we gathered three different uh, combinations to be randomly picked by our brute force script. Um, after a first fix attempt, we will also use different EIPs uh, by using TOR, um, forcing different exit nodes. Uh, rate limiting is, is very important, of course, uh, and it should be very restrictive for authentication endpoints, but it can also not uh, enough to prevent what the user account lockout does, which should be implemented both authentication and rate limited. So this is an example that we did um, with a single threaded PLC running in an ordinary laptop. For sure, if we use uh, concurrency or parallelism uh, and cloud-based approach, uh, we have done it much faster, for sure. So in the end, this is the, the access token we can have and the account takeover is, is completed to Paulo. Let's talk about excessive data exposure. This is probably one of my favorites finding. Um, we started with the user enumeration issue on the recovery password mechanism uh, and later a security misconfiguration allowing us to leverage the, the attack. Uh, the recovery password required the user to provide its email address on the front end which then uh, issues an API request to retrieve a list of uh, available uh, delivery uh, channels, either email or phone. The user can pick one on the front end and then a one-time password is delivered so that it can uh, recover his password. In this workflow, we noticed that uh, a URL, including a JSON web token, uh, were provided for each delivery method. So we took the phone URL and decoded the JSON web token. Then we found that uh, the actual user phone number is included in the JSON web, uh, web token uh, payload section, meaning that we can exchange user emails by phone numbers. Uh, note that uh, these API requests are anonymous uh, since they are aimed to recover passwords. We decided to go further and do this for an arbitrary list of email addresses that we, we gathered from pastebin.com. Uh, it had 169 email addresses and we got seven user accounts with email and phone number. Meanwhile, we found a security misconfiguration. Uh, in fact, we found an exposed error log file, uh, including some sensitive information but the most interesting one was uh, the location of some internal files. Luckily, uh, these files were also uh, exposed and publicly uh, accessible, and this is how uh, some of them look like. Uh, they were um, mailing uh, reports with uh, valid uh, user account emails uh, and also the mailing subject. So um, just by themselves, they were uh, good enough to be used for a phishing campaign. But we could even enrich it with the phone numbers, uh, complete the, uh, the info and drive some phishing or smishing attack. APIs tend to handle huge amounts of data uh, and some of them also leak uh, part of that data. Uh, you may know uh, Meetup. Meetup offers uh, pro accounts, uh, which give you access to unlimited groups and targeted communications uh, to members. Uh, you get several other features, uh, all of them for $30 per month per group. 
And in fact, you also get access to free mail addresses, uh, regardless of what privacy settings you choose and what Meetup says that they won't uh, give your email address to anyone. Uh, what we saw is that uh, as long as you can issue an API request, uh, you will be able to retrieve email addresses from um, the API. And we did this for 38,504 uh, user profiles uh, just on the, uh, the WordPress network. Uh, I think it's quite uh, huge. Uh, let's continue with the vid uh, with lack of resources and rate limiting. Well, with lack of resources and rate li limiting, um, the final objective was user enumeration. So what we have is a improper uh, rate limiting um, and uh, in the end we got the user enumeration. Uh, in this screenshot you can see, uh, because to be fair, uh, the meetup, which is the target, uh, had the rate limiting defined on it followed the, the best practice. You can see the X uh, rate limit um, custom response header. But when we try to enumerate members, we noticed that something was strange. We noticed that after a few um, rate limited requests, it just got stuck. So I don't know if it was a, a, a bug on the server side or, or something like that because it allowed us to continue and did not lock uh, our attempt to enumerate. Just a, a small video, uh, nothing fancy. But you can see that in the end, uh, after a few uh, requests, we, we did found uh, a lot of uh, user uh, names that we could use. Okay, so just simple enumeration, including the username, uh, user location, the profile photo. And by the way, you can see on the bio that it's the co-founder and former CTO um, of Meetup and PM on Facebook. So. It was, well, it was the number two, so I'm supposing it, it, uh, the idea was uh, very close to be the founder or something very important on the meetup. But it just to, to show you that a simple, uh, if you don't control and test the, the, the rate limited uh, protection, um, you, you need to make serious, you, you better test it. It's not to just put a header and didn't test and forget it. You need to, to control it, okay? So, to Paulo. Let's talk about the second authorization issue in the OWASP API Security Top 10. Broken Function Level Authorization. We began with Broken Object Level Authorization. Uh, and you should expect something similar. But instead of requesting uh, objects by their unique identifier, we're gonna ask APIs to execute functions, either regular user or admin ones. We're glad you stick with us until here because we didn't have the chance to talk about COVID-19 pandemic yet. This pandemic, among severe uh, other severe consequences, also created a new battleground, uh, conferencing tools and services. By the way, uh, this finding was yet another great job by our friends João Moraes and Guillaume Lopes. João Moraes uh, is also presenting at DEF CON this year together with Pedro Mblin, another friend of us, and you should not lose the chance to watch their talk. In addition to the audio and video features, this conferencing tool also offers a user chat. Uh, I think uh, they know that uh, users need a way to ask others whether uh, they can hear them. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether this is foolproof, but let's see what we found. While joining the meeting, uh, we noticed an API request like the one on the left. Uh, the response on the right returns a list of participants. Uh, we don't know uh, what the ticket code is, but when we see a numeric identifier like the viewer code ID, we surely test it. 
So uh, simply iterating over viewer code ID, uh, we got exactly 1496 email addresses from other uh, meeting participants. And we also got 673 phone, phone numbers from the same participants. Let's discuss security misconfigurations with David. Security misconfiguration. Well, with security misconfiguration, we did found a couple of things, but please don't expect too much from here. Uh, it's really a bunch of nothing. We did found stack traces and one of them, uh, not related to the stack trace, one of the security misconfiguration was a GraphQL introspection. We was a little bit, it was, I think, was one of the first time that I, I saw it in, in production. But let's see it in detail. Okay, so stack trace on an handle job exception. So this type of vulnerability is like boring, moving along. Another stack trace, but this time with more style. It's an OJS, an handle exception. Well, at least it's clean up your own mess, right? Okay, finally, something more clean. Uh, you know that development tools should not be deployed in production, right? And yes, this is the GraphQL uh, introspection attack. And please, GraphQL introspection um, should be disabled in production, like I said before. Uh, this will give the, 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 the attacker the opportunity to get the structure uh, of your database and many more information. So devs, keep that in mind. Uh, also, um, unique ID is base64 of the SCADED. This is what uh, 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 we underlined on the burp screenshot. By the way, base64 is encoding and not obfuscated. But anyway, thanks for the detailed explanation. Injection, one of my favorite uh, sections of this presentation. And guess what? We chain uh, uh, the vulnerabilities uh, with cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery. And in the end, well, we had, we had a cool, cool um, scenarios to present. Guess what? Meetup. All your meetup belong to us. Um, what's the, what was the, the real objective? Well, uh, I used meetup and when I see a discussion part where you could post some comments and messages um, to, the, to the group itself, it immediately wanted me to pop up some alert box. And coming from a guy that uh, loves and keep studying cross-site scripting attacks, it was th something that I would like to do. Um, the front end immediately won't allow it uh, and sanitized most of the content that I posted. So after a while and checking the burp uh, proxy logs, I noticed that some requests were being made to the API. So API did the job. Uh, I did found a, a payload that immediately triggered uh, what I wanted, in this case, <laughs> the alert one. And um, it's not the payload, it, it was not mine, of course. I want to, to thank Garrett Hayes, the, which compiled a magnificent uh, list on, on Ports Figure. Uh, so check it out. Uh, we don't have the original name. For, for the guy that created this payload, but it did the, it was the starting point to, to our attack. So what we wanted to do, okay, let's be the organizer of the meetup. Let's steal a, 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 a meetup group. Um, we noticed that even using the API, we have some shards were removed, sanitized or whatever, uh, but also they were very, easy to bypass. We just used eval and encode it in base 64. Um, we, we wanted to create um, 
a, a payload that will trigger a vulnerable cross-site request uh, forgery endpoint that we found previous. Uh, so he pointed to the uh, uh, hidden uh, uh, iframe that submitted an auto-submit form uh, that allowed um, the authenticated organizer to approve another user to co-organizer. Uh, we have a, a, a video uh, uh, showing that. So we have the drop the payload meetup uh, that is on by Funky Cat. As you can see, we have the discussion part. Pretty easy. It's default on most uh, groups. So in members, we have um, Funky Cat as a leader, organizer, uh, and David Sopas as a regular member. This David Sopas is crazy. I don't know if it's malicious or not not so we triggered the, our our poc which is the payload and after the funky cat uh, reloads the page you will see uh, a new comment in this case uh, it will be a, a, an empty uh, comment it doesn't say anything so funky cat will be like oh okay this guy didn't post anything that's weird but when you check members you can see that now, David Sopas is the co-organizer. How funny is that? And he can do anything with it. He has almost the same options that, than the funky cat. So, cool, right? But we wanted more, of course. We are security uh, researchers. We always want more. So give me some money, please. I love this man, by the way. Show me the money. Um, so we created a new POC. Uh, on on the PayPal account or the payments received, uh, the Funky Cat can collect dues to meetup members or charge members for any meetup and anything. So you have also a, a, a box where Funky Cat can put his his PayPal account. Um, but on your right side, you can see a messy curl request, just copy paste from Burp. Uh, where we use the API and trigger our payload the same way, inserting in, in the uh, discussion part. Uh, and when it triggered, it will uh, post the, 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 the payload on the discussion part. And when the funky cat goes to his page and refreshes the, the, the meetup group, you will get a new message also but again empty no problem at all but when the random fun meetup yeah that's a uh, random names okay so it goes to settings payments received and guess what the paypal account is now sending all your cash to evil hacker that's cool right <laughs> moving to paulo because this one is a huge thing I'm not sure whether this is going to be huge, but regarding logging and monitoring, this is what I believe uh, happens most with APIs. Uh, either they're not producing enough logging, uh, logs uh, have not enough details, or simply API admins are doing nothing with them. During our account takeover attempts, we never uh, received an email saying that our testing account was under attack. On the other hand, our security advisories are always received with great surprise. So we tend to assume that our activities were unnoticed. And this is not how it is supposed to be. Logging and monitoring uh, should help organizations to mitigate the risk and act on a timely fashion. It's time to wrap up this talk. Uh, we're going to share our final thoughts. Uh, we definitely uh, think that APIs are juicy. Uh, they tend to handle uh, huge amounts of data and they also uh, leak some of that data. Uh, we still see lots of user authentication issues. Uh, they were common on traditional web applications and they are still common on APIs. Uh, the same way we see a lot of uh, authorization issues. Uh, the API scope uh, tend to be uh, big and complex and uh, authorization is not an easy task. 
We have been watching the rising of GraphQL. We still see uh, REST APIs as well as XML or JSON RPC APIs, but the number of GraphQL is increasing uh, rapidly. And GraphQL is a very recent technology and it brings uh, specific security concerns. Uh, finally, uh, we, uh, from our experience, uh, organizations are still taking too long to answer uh, for or, and fix vulnerabilities. And this is something that we will keep working uh, to improve uh, with our uh, research and um, responsible disclosure. We don't want to finish uh, before leaving a special thanks to both Checkmarks and Char49 uh, for the great opportunity to presenting our research in DEF CON. Uh, we are available to answer your questions. Uh, feel free to reach us on Twitter and keep safe and strong. <laughs> <laughs>